have you been thinking, oh man, I got to get back to live in-person events and I'm not feeling so confident, then you're going to want to listen up because I'm going to go through three different techniques that you can use as well as some special tricks. I am Diane Rolston, your host, and today we're going to talk about how to appear confident. Now, what that means is, hey, maybe you're not feeling confident as you go into in-person events. Maybe you never were confident going to in-person events, or maybe the same thing happens to you when you're online. But I'm going to go through three different techniques that I use when I need to feel confident at events when I'm not already feeling it. So technique number one is to stand tall. Now, this may seem simple and you may think, I know this one, but how many times at an event do you have maybe your shoulders hunched over, your head down, or even your eyes pointed down? Hands are maybe behind your back or clasped at the front, or even worse, you've got your arms crossed. Now, these are all what not to do because they're giving that unconscious command to others that you're protecting yourself or you're vulnerable or you're timid. Now, you may be feeling that way and that's totally fine, but you want to be able to appear confident because I'm guessing these in-person events that you're going to are for networking, maybe purposes, maybe to collaborate or connect. Maybe it's just your group of friends that you're around. So how do you do it? Well, you throw your back, you know, straight, you put your shoulders up, roll them back. That's really going to put you in a really a great posture. If you're super tall, that's fine that you're tall. Wear the big shoes. It's okay. You need to own your height if you're tall. And if you're not tall, this can help you to appear more tall. And really your height doesn't matter to your confidence. It's more how you're holding yourself. So when you have your hands at your side rather than your back, you're also showing a confident, more confident, powerful pose, but still approachable when your body is opened up. Now, here's a trick. When you are feeling a little bit like you're kind of oh, going back into the old way of feeling more timid, nip into the bathroom, jump into the bathroom. I went to an event the other day. I wasn't feeling so confident right before I got on this boat for my coaching communities event. I didn't know anybody uh, before I got on. I said, okay, stand up straight, shoulders up, roll them back, girls forward. And I'm going to walk in there like I own the place. And then later on, I was feeling a little bit like, I don't know anybody. I feel hesitant walking up to people in conversations. And so I jumped into the bathroom. I kind of gave myself a moment. And then before I stepped out again, I reset my posture. So at any point you can reset your posture when you stand up, when you move to a new group of people. And also one more little tip or trick, whatever you want to call it, is do not stand behind a chair when you're introducing yourself. Now, maybe you've seen this, right? You get up from the table and then you go and stand behind your chair um, so that everyone can see you because you're sitting at, a at a, sitting at a table on a chair. And so you wanna get up and go behind, you don't wanna go right behind the chair and then hold on to the chair. If anything, just push your chair back and then take up the space or step further away from your chair. Um, so that everyone can see you ideally at the end of the table so that the people some people don't have their backs to you so take up space that shows confidence standing tall shows confidence putting your hands at your side shows confidence all of these things are your physical appearance in how you're holding yourself but the next piece of this tip number two is about how your appearance is based on what you wear and so I'm encouraging you, even though you feel like you've been in sweatpants or pajamas for most of the time, be thinking about how can I show up in my best self by having my outfit be put together? Now, whatever that means for you, but the way I see it is, you know, your clothes are clean, they're pressed, they are matching the type of event you're at, be it formal, business casual, or super casual, and that you have maybe matching shoes or a purse or some accessories, your hair is done. You know, these are, these can be seem like, oh, basic ideas. I know that Diane, but are you actually putting intentional thought into your outfit? 
Is there a way you can take it one step further by putting on some matching accessories? And here's a trick. Wear a bright color like a bright yellow jacket or a bold pattern. So if you're not a color person, then wear a bold pattern. You can wear a black and white polka dot dress, right? What this does is it helps you to stand out from everyone else. That is, if you want to stand out. It also makes you memorable because they'll be like, oh, that's the person in the, in the polka dot dress or in the yellow jacket. And it's something that people can open up with. So when I went onto this, onto this boat dinner event, you know, people were mingling and I wore a bright yellow jacket. It forced me to step into my confidence. But so many times people said, oh, I love the bright yellow or the yellow looks really good on you. I do the same with pink and blue and bold patterns. And it's that opening piece for people to say, I love the color. And then we start talking. Or they came up to me and said, oh, I've been noticing your nice bright jacket. And so it feels like you're someone that stands out and doesn't blend in that they need to come and talk to you because you exude confidence by just being able to wear that bold pattern or bold print or that bright color. And that's exactly what happened when I was on the boat. So many people um, came to talk to me and they, they then kind of matched the, the comment about my jacket to how I was showing up. Like, wow, you're so dynamic like your jacket or you're so bright and friendly like the yellow of your jacket. It was funny how there was such a play on what I was wearing. Now, key thing is you don't wanna just be your outfit, right? You don't wanna have your outfit take more attention or give get more attention than you and what you're saying. Your words matter more, who you are matters more. But if it's a way of opening things up and having you be confident, isn't that a great thing? Mm -hmm. Now, the third piece is choosing positive or upbeat topics to talk about. Now, I failed miserably on this one. I totally dropped the ball. <laughs> the reason being, I hit so much traffic on the way over into downtown Vancouver. I was so worried I was going to miss the boat leaving. I then couldn't find the parking lot that they suggested because the parking lot changed names. I then had to download the app, parking app on my phone because I was running to the boat. It was raining. Oh my goodness. So many things. Plus I was nervous. I hadn't been to this type of event before, or at least in many years, I didn't know anyone. And so when I showed up, one of the first things I said to, um, to someone was, oh, I couldn't figure out parking and I'm trying to figure out this app. And then when I started chatting with someone, I actually knew one person, when I started talking with her and someone else, my first things out of my mouth were, oh, the traffic and, oh, I had to, I had to like try to get across. I didn't know if I'd make it. Now, what is that saying about me? It's setting Maybe you can feel it right now. It's setting up in the very beginning of the conversation. Oh, she's stressed. She's anxious. She's maybe not someone who can be on time. Uh, this is not how you want to start a conversation. So I failed in that regard. And I planned on leaving so much earlier so that I could show up in a positive, calm way. So what I should have done is right before arriving, kind of given myself a head check or popped into the bathroom and help, help myself to kind of arrive, calm down, and get over kind of the, the flusteredness that I had. Because people were often can remember the first and the last thing that you shared. So here's my trick. Know what you're going to say by preparing in advance. Here are some things that you can say. You know that they're going to ask you, what do you do? Even if you're at a social event, people ask you, what do you do? And so know how you're going to answer that. Have a prepared answer. And think about that as you're driving or going to the event every single time because you have a different audience, different people, maybe a different intention at that time. Also, you can be thinking about what are some celebratory comments about yourself? Things like, did you just uh, publish a book? Did you just get um, like a new opportunity? Did, do you, are you preparing for some cool event coming up? Is there some bit of good news that you can share? So when people say, how are you doing? You can say, oh, I'm great. I actually today was just chatting with someone about this really great opportunity. So can you kind of plant seeds for things that you're working on in that how are you question? Or in like, what's going on with you? What's new? Have those answers prepared as well as the what do you do? 
Another thing is to be, you know, thinking about what's a, what's a good book that you're reading, or if you're not reading a book currently, open up a book, read a couple of pages so that you can say, I've just started reading XYZ book. Another thing is just get on, get online and watch a very interesting U, uh, TEDx, right? Not just a YouTube, not just a Facebook video, not a cat video, but pick a TEDx talk that is in alignment with something you're interested in or something you want to talk about. Then you can share some of the tidbits that the speaker uh, talked about in order to engage the conversation. Another thing is you can share a favorite quote. Now that might be a little bit more awkward, but you can, you know, when you're talking about something, you can say, oh, that reminds me of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes, which is, and one of my favorites is Jim Rohn's quote, you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And Les Brown's quote, you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And so I like to throw these different quotes out or these different meanings from different authors or experts in order to you know, connect with what people are saying and to give them a nugget of information. So which one are you gonna do? Hopefully all three. You're gonna stand tall, work on your posture. Are you gonna have your outfit be put together and wear that bright color or bold pattern? And are you gonna figure out which positive or upbeat topics am I gonna talk about and prepare them in advance? I hope you do all three. Leave me a comment. And let me know which one that you have done or you will do or that you have you actually have gone and done it and got good results. Let me know. And if you have other ideas, share them as well. So thank you so much for listening to the Dynamic Women podcast. It's just such a joy to be able to share these different tips and techniques and share some of the stories that I've gone through, where I've fallen flat on my face, and where I've excelled. If you have a topic that you'd really like me to cover, then please email my team at the email address, team at dianerolson.com. And that's also the email address that you send any of your reviews to. So if you do a review online of the podcast, we'd really appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and take a stream shot, send it to that email, and we're going to send you something special in the mail as long as you send us your mailing address. Hit subscribe, share with a friend, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye.